Hello and welcome to the first of what will hopefully be a ongoing weekly series of Talking TV with my mum. Uh, obviously we may come up with a better name for the podcast series further on down the line um, and maybe that's something that you guys can get involved in. Uh, maybe in the, in the comments section if you want to come up with some names of what we could call this but for the time being I think we're going to go with that one. It sort of says what it does on the tin. Uh, or does what it says on the tin even um, so we'll go with, with that for now but uh, this is our sort of weekly Geekdom weekly roundup of all things geek um, I was, I, if you've watched any of my videos before any of my gaming videos I've made it clear that my channel is, is not just a gaming channel it is to cover Geekdom in its entirety hence the name so we will be talking about various TV shows, so it's going to be things like The Walking Dead, like Arrow, like uh, The Orville, Star Trek, things like that. Um, so we're going to be doing this every week and we'll do our take, it's, this is like an opinion piece, critique, review, roundup. Uh, maybe we're not going to deep dive as much as some of the uh, bigger channels out there that break down each individual episode for an hour. It's just us sort of chatting as an overview, it's something that we've done uh, for quite a long time now, we used to, you know, always do this once a week where we'd catch up and go, so what do you think? What do you think? Blah, 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 blah. Um, and we just decided we're going to incorporate that into the channel. Um, so hopefully you guys will like it. Uh, please bear with us. Teething problems and things will probably abound. We're getting used to this. Uh, this is it's a new thing for me to do a podcast. Obviously, I've been used to doing talking to myself for a little while now with the gaming videos but in terms of doing a podcast and being a host it's very different for me and for my mum this is a brand new thing altogether so with that being said and her being mentioned hi mum are you there hello dom yeah i'm here honey how's, <laughs> how's things yes not too bad thank you i'm a bit nervous and also quite excited about doing this with you uh hopefully it's going to turn out well and hopefully our um our audience are going to enjoy it and they're going to kind of keep coming back for more. Well, we do this. We've been doing this for a long time now, so we might as well broadcast it to the world and see what they think. <laughs> yeah. Good comments yeah. and feedback. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully people will put things down in the comments. And don't forget, guys, if you're new to the channel, uh, please subscribe and also leave us a like on this video. Uh, let us know what you think. And... You know, maybe we'll we'll do some things perhaps in the future. I have got, um, you know, other links in my description box for Patreon and stuff. Maybe we'll look at doing uh, like a competition or something. Maybe, you know, with with patrons that, you know, we can do a, I don't know, like a not a raffle, but a way of coming up with a, a short list of names. But for the time being, chuck names down in the comments. Uh, nice names, by the way. No, no spam, no trolling, no rude things. <laughs> we don't want anything nasty in there, but you know, give us some ideas of what maybe we should call this. And then maybe we'll take the best ones and we'll take it to Patreon and, and let people vote on it that way uh, in terms of a subscription thing of like, you know, pay a couple of dollars or whatever. And, you know, that'll get you in the in the hat. And then we'll do a a poll of which one's got the best votes and then we'll take it from there. And, and maybe that'll be the new name for the channel. So We'll see. Uh, so without further ado, we've done some introductions. Uh, so the first thing on our agenda is Titans. So I had obviously been aware of Titans a while ago. Then the whole season came on Netflix. I sat and binged, watched all of it. And then I said to you, you need to watch Titans. It's really good. So over the course of the last couple of days, you've made your way through it. Um, so all, what, was your, what was your overall take on it? What did you think? Well, obviously, when you mentioned, you kept saying, "Let's watch Titans." Watch, you must watch Titans. And, and and I said, I was asking you what it was about, and you said, "Oh, Robin off a of Batman." And I was going, but I didn't watch Gotham. And I'm, obviously, I'm an old school. You see, I like Batman and Robin back in the day. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to bother with that. But obviously, you persuaded me, and I was really glad I did. Fair. So. Um, it's that much so I had 11 episodes which I watched in just over two days in yep. between to work and running a house and sleeping <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally totally um well basically um my first impression was very weird um it's about this girl with very nice blue hair which some would actually quite like the, the hair <laughs> uh, and I thought right she's obviously some kind of demon 
And then obviously they switch from this girl they show at the beginning to a guy in a suit. And I realise, ah, he's Robin off of Batman. Yeah. So anyway, so we, you know, we're, this is a guy detective and there's, the streets have trouble. This guy appears in a, in a mask and kicks ass. For the uh, and then I was quite imp- f- I thought it was hilarious when he he said F Batman yeah <laughs> where's Batman where's Batman and he went F Batman when he killed them all mm-hmm. and I thought so vicious because obviously in my day Batman and Robin weren't like killers but he was oh evil but then that made me want to watch it more mm. fair. bad to fair so obviously that was interesting then we found out he was a detective but he was Robin yeah. Anyway, so then, so the story basically is based around the girl. So the girl is running away, and um, some woman befriends her, um, saying, "Oh, don't worry, I'll look after you, darling. I'll give you a bed for the night." And then we find out that she's actually a baddie mm-hmm. who's trying to take her somewhere. The girl uses her nozzle, throws something at the police car, gets arrested. So this old lady can't get her. So from that minute, we go. Oh, who is she? What what's she all about? She has she had dreams at the beginning of, of some circus act. What's this all about? Yeah. You know, who is she? She's obviously got demonic. So I'll say I watch a lot of stuff for supernatural, so to me, as soon as the demonic came out, I was hooked. <laughs> totally. Absolutely totally. But what do you reckon though? What what about that first episode then, Don? Yeah, I mean it was interesting because it was kind of like, oh yeah, this isn't your this isn't your old school Batman um, spin off show, you know, with like you said the the alley scene with Robin, um, just kicking butt, you know, he was very violent. I mean, some of those quite I I found myself sort of cringing a little bit, like um, he broke the window and he pulled the guy's face across it and oh, scraped like... the guy across the wall and stuff, and I was like, oh my god, this is hardcore. Um, and then, like you said, the bit they'd been playing up, up, up over and over on the trailers was the bit with him, F Batman. Um, oh, but, I don't know. I didn't see the trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was when they were, like, saying this is coming soon. They had this bit with him, shows a bit of a fight sequence. And then he says, you know, they go, oh, where's Batman? Like they did in this. But then it cuts to him doing the F Batman straight away. So I was like. He hasn't said that line yet. Maybe they just did it for sensationalism for the trailer and it's not going to come. But then, obviously, it was after he finished beating them all up. Then he turned away and then he said it. And I was like, ah, OK. So they just, you know, they did it in the way that they do with trailers. Um, but, yeah, it was interesting. And then, like, say, you know, by day, he's a detective in Detroit. And then he's also got the Robin thing still going on. Um, same with you with the whole thing with, with Rachel. It's like, okay, this girl, she's got something going on here. And I kept thinking demon, you know, the whole, the eyes and the blackness. And um, it made me think a little bit. I was thinking that program, what was that program that we watched? We ended up giving up watching it. But um, was it called, it was Outcast, wasn't it? Outcast, yeah. It made me think a little bit of that, you know, with the how the the blackness, the, the dark shadowy sort of thing of like that being... I mean, I know that's used in other things as well, but it just gave me a vibe of that. It sort of confused me because I thought, right, Robin's from the sort of Gotham era. She saw like demonic from something like Supernatural. Mm-hmm. And then they introduced another person, some weird woman with purple hair, I think she had. And so I went, oh, she's a hooker then. No, no oh, no, not purple hair. She had like kind of reddish hair. Um, Corey. Reddish, yeah, reddish hair. Yeah. So when I saw her, she, this woman... So, so obviously they introduced a lot of characters in the first episode. Mm-hmm. So this woman wakes up in a car, didn't know who the hell she was, went into a, a Vienna, I think they were. Yeah, that's uh, right. I decided she's obviously a hooker, and then she did something. I went, oh, she's a meta. And then I'm thinking, go into the other programs, you know, flash <laughs> and all that. Um, and then I thought, and then when she kicked the shit out of that guy in the first episode, I went, the guy that's hiding in the cupboard, I went, what the hell is she? Because I thought, I've never seen anything like this. Hmm. So anyway, then that went on. So then the girl gets attacked by another, uh, the girl, oh. Rachel, gets attacked. And then this ball, it, look, it appeared to me, she was tied up. Oh. This guy, she went inside this guy. 
Like the demonic bit went inside him and destroyed him from the yeah. inside out. And then the next thing you know, she's still tied up. And I'm going, what? Half <laughs> of that? You know? Yeah. And then moving forward, the next minute, you got this tiger in the, the green tiger <laughs> in the woods that suddenly it's all like, looks like it's having a, being sick. And the next thing, it, it metamorphoses into a, a young lad. Yep. And I'm going, right, okay. I've got to watch the next episode. <laughs> yeah, it's a good I way to get you hooked. so many combinations of type of people from lots of different types of programs in one program. If yeah. you get what I mean. So we've, we've had that, the, all those three, four things we've had like, in different programs, but they're all in one program. So I thought, where's his story going? One thing I would say is like what I thought of in terms of you, when I was thinking of you and your view of things on this first episode, um, specifically with Corey's character. So the bit when she went to the nightclub, so she's trying to work out who am I, what's going on. She had that really awesome bit in her hotel room where she just kicked the crap out of that guy, punched him halfway across the room. Um, and then she got this name and she went to this club. And then when she like turned her powers on, I thought, because obviously I, for me, I'm like, well, I know the character. I'm familiar with the character from comics and things like anyway, but mum's not going to necessarily be so well versed on her that you might see a comparison with Firestorm from um, Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I meant. I thought she's some sort of person that's been hit by uh, whatever hit them in the, the Flash program. Yeah, and that's why she can like turn into fire and use fire and stuff like yeah. that um but yeah no i thought it was cool but one thing i'm a bit disappointed about okay so this is something i will drop this into the conversation right now rather than leaving it at the end because it's kind of appropriate so they've recently now this might just be the actors playing with with the audience and with interviewers but they've teased the idea that at some point titans may cross over with the arrowverse okay because I don't know if you noticed on the credits, but one of the people that makes the Titan show is Greg Belanti, who is oh, obviously our, our guy with all of our Arrowverse shows. Um, so you've already got a connection between the, the person making it. You know, he's making these shows and he's also making Titans. Um, so they made this, you know, this thing that, oh, yeah, it's going to cross over with the Arrowverse at some point. So that bearing that in mind, wasn't it? slightly disappointing because this is obviously something they decided after the event not while they were first filming uh titans but when rachel uh no sorry not rachel when Corey goes to the club the guy the gangster guy that she takes out is actually constantine kovar who we saw in arrow being played by dolph lundgren oh yeah so you know when oliver went to russia and he went up against kovar and kovar was played by dolph Lund lundgren from rocky and things like that yeah yeah. And it's like, this is the same character, but it's being played by two different people. So that that was a bit like, when I found out that they might do a crossover, I was like, but they've already introduced the character that was in... So unless they do it like they've done with some of the other things, where Titans yeah. takes place on a different Earth to Arrow and the Flash and stuff, then that would, you know, that would then allow for that. But may, maybe I'm just nitpicking, I don't know. Probably. <laughs> so... um Fast forward to the next episode where we meet um, Hawk and Hawk and Dove. Dove, and it turns out he was a friend of theirs in the past, and had um, a little had a little something something going on with Dove by the well, looks of yeah. things. Yeah, he had a little fling with one with the woman, and mm -hmm. uh, point. Um, obviously, I noticed in the in that episode there was a picture of a blackhead woman. I thought, oh, she, but they didn't elaborate on that in the episode. Yeah. So then, um, so yeah, so then come in the same episode, we are introduced to this very weird, very nice family. They were like something out of the 1950s, weren't they? Yeah, very weird. And the guy gets a knock on the door saying you're... Uh, activated. Like you're, yeah, you're activated or something. And he goes in and he takes a, a box out with syringes and goes... Who's first? And the kids go, we are, we are, we are. So I was thinking, what's going on here? So they all got injected. And then next thing we know, 
where Robin has appeared with Rachel thinking it's sanctuary for his, his little girl, these weird family turn up, mm-hmm. which seem to be indestructible. Oh, and but like, before that, doing? before they turned up there, they went to the new girl that got made to be um to be Dick's partner. Um, they went and like tortured and killed her, didn't they? Oh yeah. Well, I said the weird family, and then I put beating up the blonde cop. Yeah. And... So they they went yeah, and yeah. killed her, and then they then obviously tracked them down to where Hawk and Dove were, and then you had that big like brutal fight on the rooftop. Um, and they just couldn't beat them. They were just like. They were like unstoppable. robotic. Like, what the hell? No matter what they do to them, like they break the hand and the hand clip back into place and it yep. was like they were gonna get rid of them and then unfortunately the the girl, Dove, got shoved off the roof. Mm-hmm. And well at the time it looked like she was dead, to fair. Yeah. So um So then in the next episode we find out that this crazy firewoman, Corey, has come to rescue the girl. Yeah, and that's who she's been looking for. Yeah, so so that was interesting, thinking, oh, okay, so that's what she's, that's the guy in the in the wardrobe at the beginning saying we found her, and she found a picture, so she's looking to to rescue the girl. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so she, she came to rescue her. Episode from when Robin was taken in by um, Bruce. What's his name, Bruce? Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. He was off the, he's lost his parents, so he got adopted after the accident of the fair at uh, the circus, but taken in by Bruce Wayne, and he wouldn't have an end of that. Mm-hmm. So he decided to nick the car. Which <laughs> he had in, uh, fast forward. Um, and, what, and I thought it was hilarious. I thought he's he's determined. Uh, he's got all his riches. I'm just going to use it. And I thought, yeah, why not? I'd probably do the same. He yeah. definitely didn't want to be there. He never saw the guy, really, did he? could hear him. He never actually met him. Mm-hmm. So he thought, I'd do a bit of adventurous. That was quite, quite cool. Um, so anyway, uh, blah, blah. so apparently this this woman with the, the red hair had been looking for the girl for longer than we realised. Yeah. And um, But we don't know anything else about her, to fair. Even she doesn't know who she is, to fair. No. Right, so then uh, they re- the woman realised that when she rescued the girl, that that she there was a com a picture of the convent on. That was the key for the story. So she decided to take it to the convent, thinking they'll have the answers. And they all just remembered her when she was a small child, and her mum had been there, and she she'd left years later, and they had never seen her again since. Yeah. So they thought, right, she's safe in the hands of them. She buggered off in Robin's car and decided to look up this key because she asked the nun about this key. She told her what the key meant, went to one place and found there was another clue. It's like, seriously? And then the other, the thing in the, um, I think it was escape place or something. Yeah. Uh, there was another key which led, led to a lockup. So she goes to the lockup, finds all this information, which she recognised some of it but didn't know why she recognised it. Mm-hmm. Then Robin decides to follow her and find out. So he realised she'd obviously been looking for Rachel for longer than she realised. Yeah. But nobody knew what it meant, none of it. It didn't make any sense to Corey or Robin, but they took some, uh, was it Arabic or some sort of weird language that she, they had odd pinned on the board? Well, yeah, the, the language was all over the place. and She was able to read the language, but she didn't know how she was able to read the language and Robin didn't know anything about the language at all. He was just like this weird language, but he took lots of pictures. So he went around with his phone and he took lots of pictures of all the things all over the walls because obviously he's a detective. So he's like, Oh, you know, I'll catalog, catalog all of this stuff. Um, and they, you know, she was like, it's, it seems familiar, but I can't work out why because she's still obviously suffering from her memory loss. Um, now, the other thing that quickly, just to backtrack on, when she was doing the first bit with the locker keys and stuff, they were um, they went to a, a bowling alley. Um, a bowling alley, not a skate place. I know it was, I couldn't remember exactly where. Oh, was it? No, was it a skate place? Was it like a oh, roller? It was, it was like a roller derby, wasn't it? Like a roller disco place. 
um, the and that's where she met. That's where we met up with um, the boy with green hair. Um, and it's like, okay, so that's the guy that we saw that was the tiger. Um, and it's like, okay, so he's here. So there's like the characters are starting to kind of interact with each other. But then yeah, she befriended Rachel while those two were doing talking shop. Yeah. If I remember rightly. And then they all left. And obviously she, when they left, she got a bit mad. She went a bit like, you know, the dark side came out of her a bit. And they like, we have to go get out of here. And he came running out to see what was going on. Because didn't she, Um, because they were arguing. So she like went, rah, and she like blew up all of the cars, like made all the windows blow out of the cars and stuff. And so he came running out to see what was going on. But by that point, it was too late and they'd all headed off. Um, and then, yeah, they took her to the convent and then the nuns like drugged they, her they and went in, they locked went her up. They went in that lockup. And the, in the meantime, the nuns had decided what they were going to do with her. Because obviously now these other two weren't there watching. They knew who she was and they thought she has to be put in a secure place to save her. So they put her in a like a room, a locked room, like a mm-hmm. sort of steel cell almost wasn't it yeah but then unfortunately there was a mirror in there which every time she looked in the mirror she saw the demon side of her Mm -hmm. and then uh sort of convinced her to do some bad stuff which she then ended up burning down the convent and escaping escaping the convent um in the middle well so then she run she ran out of that place and went into the forest and then the tiger guy appeared Yep, that's right. And he said he knew somewhere safe he could take her with people he knew that were different, obviously, because he'd seen she was different from the bit in the car park when she blew all the the screens off. So he took her to this house, which looked like no one lived in it. Yep. And there we met a robot man who was an ex-Formula One driver. Yeah, race driver, yep. Yeah, so basically his body had been wrecked and he was built up into a robot Mm -hmm. Uh, a mummified man yeah uh, and something else in the room upstairs which was a woman who looked to me like a load of blubber yeah so what did i put um oh yeah no no yes 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 okay so there was a stretch armstrong (laughs) hilarious so i thought inverted commas stretch armstrong he had a lot of geeky stuff, didn't he, as a kid? Yeah. When she saw the mummy man, she said, are you invisible under those bandages? Was yeah, that... I love that, because he had the classic look of the invisible yeah, man, didn't he? Like, no, okay. But then and he then... was like, you don't want to see what's under here. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. And then we about Rita, and then he said, are you coming down? And then they showed this load of, Ugh. well, I don't know what it was, blubber. Yeah. Like, what the hell is that? Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. So anyway, then they had the dinner, and there's lovely dinner, and this poor robot guy is looking at it going, can I eat any of it? I know. He's just looking, going, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the the woman appears, really beautiful, like almost like Loretta Hayworth type looking, but woman. Comes yeah. down the stairs thinking, okay, where'd she come from? And fe- feasted on more food than any of them. <laughs> and then we realised then obviously because she got a bit worried about the girl then she started turning into the blubber because mm-hmm. the girls all like reassured her go no it's fine and then she's like oh okay I'm ra- I'm okay now but then they said oh the, the chief will be back soon who turned out to be like Dr Frankenstein <laughs> to be fair mm. what, he, what he was basically doing and then um so basically, he said he, she could, uh, he had an experiment down in the, in the the basement, and he was doing something to this woman, and they all sort of congregated, and the girl said she could heal her, and she touched her, and he thought, oh, she's got powers. So then his his next thing was, oh, he can use her, basically. Yeah. So then it was a case of like, we need to get her out of there. In the meantime, Robin and, well, not Robin, Dick, or whatever his real name is. Yeah. Dick and uh, Corey had found them, got there. By that time, sort of destruction had uh, ensued with uh, Rachel 
breaking this guy's back again, apparently again. So I don't know what happened to him the previous time because he goes, "Don't worry, he'll we'll get he'll be in a wheelchair again for a while." So I thought, yeah, somebody else, he else has encountered him at some point and resisted him. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they they went they went to leave and they took the the tiger boy with them. Yeah, that was really cute. And although they kept calling him Gar because his name was Garfield, so I, I called him Garf. And I thought, oh, Bainsworld, <laughs> Bainsworld, Bainsworld, excellent, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so that was green, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't help but say that bit because I've been dying to say that to you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so we've got Garf, Sun Woman, Tiger Boy, the Demon Girl, and Robin. <laughs> that was their team. Um, so just like before we move on a bit so um, yeah so obviously you've just outlined basically everything that happened in the episode um, apart from so there was the bit when when they were trying to find Rachel uh, earlier on in the episode Rachel and Gar had bumped into some hunters in the woods um, which they frightened off and then later on when Corey and Dick were trying to find the kids they went to that hunter's house and Robin just lost it and started beating this guy's face in. Oh, that's how, yeah, yeah, that's how they found yeah. And it was like this continuing theme that he might have been a hero, but he's also got this really dark, violent streak Very in vicious. him. Um, and then obviously the, the guy had a little boy and that was like, oh, come on. And she felt really bad and she gave the guy money and he was like, get out of here and stuff. But at least they got a, a hint to say that this house... There's this the only house around. They maybe they went there. It's been a, it's abandoned, and then obviously when they went there, all the lights. It was like something out of a haunted house movie because like all the lights were flashing and stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, we've clearly come to the right place. That's um, it was wasn't it? Yeah, and when they went in, you had again like almost like a haunted house. So it's all dark and the lights are coming on and off, and they're like in a room. And then Rita appears behind them with her face all falling off, and she's like, get out of here. And then. Um, the robot man appears and he's like trying to scare them and all of this kind of stuff and it was like it was so funny because it was like something out of like a haunted house or something you know they were just like jumping out to try and make them afraid and get get them to leave the house um, okay. the other thing about it as well is that obviously this team they're called Doom Patrol yeah and yeah. we're actually going to see more of them because this in a way this episode was more like a little teaser for this team because they're getting their own show so doom patrol series is coming in the next couple of months um and it's going to focus on these characters we met in this episode potentially also more characters because in the comics there are more members of the doom patrol um and what's interesting about them is the fact that they're kind of in a way that you could look at them as a bit like the x-men in the the x-men are a bunch of you know like freaks and weirdos they've all got different powers some of them look don't look human some of them are you know a a brain and jar whatever it is they're all like different things and it's the same with the doom patrol and that's because there's there's this long-held dispute about whether or not marvel ripped off dc or whether dc ripped off marvel because both the doom patrol and the x-men both came out like in the same year um and it was around a time where there was quite a bit of backwards and forwards between writers and people going from one company to the next. So it was like, did somebody get an idea from Marvel and take it to DC and they tried to come up with their own version of the X-Men beforehand? Or did somebody go from DC and Marvel went, that seems like a good idea. We'll come up with our own version of the Doom Patrol. Um but either way, it's one of those things, you know, that they are, they're kind of like the X-Men of the DC universe. Um, and the whole thing with, like, the Chief, with the Doctor, um, he, you know, he's sort of an odd character. Because on, on the surface, you go, look at all the good he's done for these people. You know, the, like, say, Robot Man, he was in such a bad accident that he should, you know, normal medical practices, he probably would have died. They would have... Whether his brain was alive or not, if his body was, you know, if he was in a coma, he wasn't recoverable, they would have just turned off the machine and that would have been the end of him. Um, But he gave him a new lease of life. You know, he was able to put his brain in a robot body and make that brain be able to control the robot body so he could carry on living. Um, So, like, and the same with, you know, with the the guy with the bandages, the negative man, and also with Rita. Um, 
these were all people that their lives would have come to an end or they just would have been like he said about Rita. She would have just been kept in a lab and experimented on. So he does a lot of good for people. But at the same time, he also is a bit like you said, like a bit of a Dr. Frankenstein. He's like like even when she wanted him to stop when he was testing Rachel and doing stuff with Rachel, he kept going and he like he shot Gar with a tranquilizer gun and he was like, I must continue my work, you know, and it's kind of like yeah. this. This guy is a bit. He's, you know, he's not quite good, but he's not quite evil. He's kind of a bit of both. Yeah. Well, um, so. I reckon, you know, we'll see. We'll see how, how the series progresses. But, mm -hmm. you know, we've got some more episodes to talk about, which we'll probably do next time. But we'll, you know, we'll move on to another, another one of our favourites, I think. Well, before we do, so what we'll do is we'll... um. We'll do the final because that that episode was kind of focused more on the the stuff to do with the Doom Patrol and that. So we'll we'll end it up on on episode five here, and then in the next podcast we'll pick up from episode six because I feel that's that's kind of a good a big one because it also means this part of our chat ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. So episode five, so we've got the gang are all together finally. So our group of Titans are all together and they're on the road. Um, and they do this thing where they've got to try and learn their powers. Um, and it's like, you know, we if we're going to work as a team, then we need to know what everybody can do. So they have that, like, training segment where they're, like, in a barn or whatever. And it's like, right, you're up. You do your thing. You're up. You do this thing. And then they're all, like, just, like afterwards to Robin. They're like, now you do your thing. He's like, nah. <laughs> nah. I, I'll show you at some other point kind of thing. And they're all like, well, you're holding out on us. Um, then you've got the... Um, the nuclear family, so they came back into it because the dad got killed, didn't he? Of the the original dad. The dad got so, killed, and the other guy said, "Well, I give you." He was going to blow them up there and then, because obviously, obviously, that clearly was some sort of device. Yeah. Uh, said, "Don't worry, I'm going to create you a new dad." Yeah. So that we saw him, uh, some poor guy in some chamber where they were making him into the new uh, weird family dad mm -hmm. basically. and um, what, that, so that's what they were doing and what I thought was quite comical um, about um, we had a bit the bit when they were in the I think it was a hotel was it a hotel they were staying in somewhere anyway and my Corey said she wanted to see back Robin's show me your moves yeah but, she wasn't on about those kind of moves. <laughs> no. Even even the woman who was up the uh, desk wanted to see his moves. Yes, that's and true. Afterwards, after his session, and yep. he didn't know what to say, did he? Bless him. She goes, I have wine and everything. He went, yeah. no, not interested. <laughs> but then, poor woman, <laughs> that poor woman then got taken out, though, because the new nuclear family turned up to his attack them. It arrived, didn't they? So basically... She she didn't even get as far as the end of the, the corridor, did she? No. And that's what I said. They're indestructible. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. LOL. <laughs> and then obviously they had the big fight sequence and finally came together as a team. And and then they finally got to find out the dick is Robin. And they were like, thought it was really cool. Especially Gar thought it was really cool that he was Robin. And he got to show off his moves and they all fought together as a team and they took out all the others apart from the mum. And then when she realised, she was like, oh, OK, I'm outnumbered now. And then it was like, uh, I surrender sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. See, that was like oh, hilarious. So then they, they chained them all up and they were like questioning them and stuff. And then they they sifted through their stuff. Dix did some of his detective work and discovered the lead back to the the guy that was controlling them so he went off to find him and said to Corey keep an eye on them don't kill them don't do anything um <laughs> that didn't end well basically, did it basically that we're all we all we're all dead now because because of this so they're coming for all of us for both mm -hmm. of us yep and uh and he, he was just trying to convince robin to have some eggs and he pressed the button and blew their heads off it blew the heads off of the family. And, and then, then Corey was like, oh, no, Dick's going to kill me. <laughs> and then in the meantime, Robin and the guys, all these soldiers started shooting at them. Mm -hmm. 
And then the next thing you know, somebody saved him or helped him. Yes. So somebody came to his rescue at the end. Who was that somebody? We'll talk about that next time. Yeah, I agree. So that's Titans up until now. So we've that's, we've covered almost like the halfway point of the season. So we'll discuss the second half in the next podcast. So what's next on the agenda? Supergirl. Supergirl. Supergirl, my program I used to love to hate. Yeah, and now you just hate. No. <laughs> no I just love it. Though. They finally got their act together. I think they got a new writer, somebody told me. Yes. Apparently, my friend at work. But mm-hmm. yeah, so I used to like a pool. I used to watch it just because it was part of the deal. But now I actually enjoy it. So basically, it came back with a bang. And I was totally confused right at the beginning because there was another Supergirl. But yeah. The Supergirl closed. And I was going, okay. We have a new Supergirl. Where is she? So, still confused. I I will tell you now before we finish the whole conversation. I'm still confused by that one. So, do you not remember? Do you you not remember then? We we have seen that other Supergirl before um, in Russia because we saw her previously a couple of episodes back that she just emerged and it was like, is this something to do with whatever it is that Lana's, uh, sorry, not Lana, Lena is working on? <clears throat> excuse me, is working on um, and that there's this other version of Supergirl uh, somewhere out in Russia. Yeah, I think uh, I sort of thought about that, but then I thought it probably was back in the day when I was, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a bit cheesy sometimes, but everyone likes a bit of cheese, but, you know, <laughs> you know, it was a bit cheesy. But anyway, so moving on. So we had the, we had a, a ship sailing in the sea, and all these soldiers were being killed by something invisible. Now it was mostly like it would go predator all over again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but obviously you didn't really see anything, so they all got pulled away. And obviously then Supergirl was in the mid- was there, luckily to save the day. Unfortunately, though, it was about to blow up. So that was like, okay, what's all this about? And yeah, when she got there, um, she was trying to save people, and then she saw something. She out of the water, mm-hmm. got pulled, pulled in by this invisible thing, and then they realised there was a bomb on it. So then she had to grab that and chuck that out to sea. Yeah. In order to like, but then obviously that didn't help her because obviously. We realised later on that it was a, something that no one should have known about. Mm-hmm. But um, moving forward a little bit, John Jean, Jean has become a PI. Yeah, he set up his own little office thing. Yeah, and then Brainy, Brainiac decided to turn up and employ him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said, looked around his room and said, you're very old because he's got so many old stuff. Yeah. He's futuristic, so to him it looks very old, I presume. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he wanted John to be Supergirl's inverted commas, Girl Friday. <laughs> yeah. And he said, I have money, and he kept trying to buy him. And no, 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 not interested. Blah, blah, blah. Told him to leave, and then he left to want the money. I love the fact he's so posh. Yeah. A posh, alien, futuristic person. Mm-hmm. He just has me in hysterics. He's just so hilarious. I just love it when he's on the screen. It's like, wow, brilliant. Yeah, so, yes, yeah, so, so, yes, what do you have to say about it? Um, yeah, I mean, just backtracking a little bit, obviously, with the the previous episode we'd got before the Elseworlds crossover, um, Supergirl basically ended up her, her, um, her work, her alliance, if you might call it, with the DEO. Um, because they wanted her to reveal her identity, and she's like, I can't do that, so right, so you, you no longer work here, basically. Um, so they're turning up at this uh, crisis. So, obviously, the, what's her name? Is it Colonel Haley, the, the new woman that's in, that we don't like? Uh, she was like, you know, this is your place, you shouldn't be here, and she's like, you can't tell me what to do, and obviously Haley didn't like that, so she's like, I'm going to find out, by hook or by crook, I'm going to find out who Supergirl is. Uh so she was like, we're going to have this interrogation thing. So Alex was obviously worried. And she's like, oh, we need to 
rally together all the people that know that Kara and Supergirl are the same person and we need to all be on the same page uh, to make sure that, that you know, she doesn't find out who she really is and stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, a bit with Brainy. So Brainy obviously went to see John and had the thing about, you know, trying to employ him. I do apologise to the listeners. Because it's only the previous take opening because I'm so used to just, like, pick up where we last start, finished. So I just go into the next episode. <laughs> and I think I've been on the previous. Obviously, you guys may not have watched, not know where we meant where we came in on this episode. So I do apologise for that. But, yeah, so, yeah, that was, obviously, the whole episode was, like, no, let anyone know we know who she is. Yeah. Basically. That was the background story to the main story. We also uh, had, we also had, um, Opic of Brainy, we also had the really awkward and quite funny phone call where he basically phoned Nina up and asked her if she liked food. Um, and then it turned out that he was basically asking her out. <laughs> and she's like, um, I like food. Are you asking me out for food? Um, yes, I suppose I am. <laughs> so that was really funny. Um, I like their little relationship, this whole weird, you know, from another planet. He's a... Uh, fifth level intelligence from the future you know and it's like what an odd couple they make um but it's it's quite it's quite endearing they are quite a sweet aspect to this program moment because they're both very innocent seeming characters aren't they they're both like oh you know it's been revealed that she's something other than just the sort of like pro yeah like um another super girl as she, Kara, as you know like Steve, we said previously like oh god she's just like Kara. Yeah. I'm trying to be Kara. So at least And it's like, nope, she's not. She's she's an alien and, you know, um there's gonna be more to come from her in the future. Um and when Brainy turned up for his meal with her, it turned out he had an ulterior motive because as much as he clearly likes her and she clearly likes him, he was also trying to recruit her. Yes. And so he's like, I have some costume ideas <laughs> and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, this isn't weird. <laughs> Supergirl sidekick. Yeah. Yeah. But before, previous to that, they know he was on about that Haley woman. The fact mm-hmm. he had a way of stopping himself from being interrogated. Yeah, because obviously he's like a robot. He's able to compartmental his brain. Mm-hmm. So at one point when uh, sister Alec, Alec, she asked him, do you do still know she is? And he went, um, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> he's been interrogated so much and he was so keeping the secret in his brain that he actually nearly took away. Mm-hmm. The, the, the girl got a bit like, you do know who she with you. Do you not think, though, that these alien things, when you see them, see the outline of them, look very similar to something we've seen previously? They reminded me a little bit of the, um, oh, what were they called? Do you know that when they did the first crossover um, between when they Flash... They like a wormhole thing. Before that, it's before that. So it's the one where um, it was our first crossover with Supergirl, Flash and Arrow. And you had these aliens come and they were like really, you know, oh, they're like a warlike race and they're, they're like a plague of locusts. They just go destroy everything in their path. Um, later on in an episode of Supergirl, there was the bit where she used the wor- the portal device to go yeah. onto an alien ship. And we saw those creatures again. Um, the name, the name of the species escapes me right now because this is going back quite a while now. Warlike, that they were calling it, but they very, they did look similar to something we'd seen previously on there. Wasn't yeah, it? they they were similar to those creatures. I felt, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because these were called what were they called the Morai. The Morai, yeah. 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 So yeah, so you had the, them being the thing, and it turned out they were something to do with the military. The military had been like raising these aliens and training them basically to be soldiers and then decided because now all of a sudden, you know, it's all this like alien racism stuff in Supergirl. It's like, oh, we hate aliens, aliens go back home kind of thing. Um, they pulled the plug on the Morai project and they basically they were going to kill them all. Yeah. So these creatures are just defending themselves and fighting back. Yeah, yeah so to say seriously. Hmm. Yeah. But um, before they, um, the big, the big story in that, there was the, the reveal from Lena to uh, to James about her uh, thing uh, her thing she's trying to do her experiment to give yes superpowers. Mm-hmm. So that was like interesting that she sort of like revealed it to him. What do you think he really thought? 
I think that it was it was interesting because of his reaction about the fact that he's supporting her. And I think in his mind, he's thinking, hmm, maybe I can get some of this and maybe I can become super powered. You yeah, know? because obviously when he went in as Guardian, he was wanted to be one of the superheroes, didn't he? So yeah, it's just like sort of cosmetic almost. So he's probably like, ooh, he's going to like like this side. I don't think Supergirl will if she finds out. No. Personally, I thought that at the time. I thought, really, James? But then thinking about like you just said there, I think, well, yeah, the way he was so eager to be a superhero himself, Mm -hmm. when um, the other guy was there that helped him, um, and if he said, like, I can say I'm genuinely one of them now, not just like I've got, I'm I'm a suit. Yeah. You have the powers, so that's not a good alliance to fair in my eyes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that the the more more I attacked with DEO and nearly killed that Haley woman, but that yeah. Supergirl, <laughs> we didn't. And then they wiped her mind, and then she's still on the case. Well, yeah, because that was the other thing we ju- we glossed over that. Obviously, with her interrogations, eventually one of the DEO agents that knew Kara's secret cracked and told her the truth, and then. Good old plot devices, good old TV shows. So just as she found out the truth, the more I attacked the base. So it was like Supergirl turned up, saved the day, and then it's kind of like, I know who you are now. And basically she threatened her, didn't she? And she was like, unless you come back and work here and you agree to follow orders and give up all rights to everything, I'm going to, you know. What she did in order yeah. to keep her secret. Mm. and it was like i'm going to control who you are and alex was like no i'm not having that anymore and she punched her in the head <laughs> and like knocked her out but then obviously yeah they they wiped her memory but then she brought this truth thing in which yeah you forgot and obviously what she'd known but she still had the determined they didn't wipe that side of it did they she still like mm-hmm. i still want to know who she is because i was thinking oh that means she's off her case now i was like no she still wants to know they go there's no way they can lie to that and they just mm. went, oh we, that means go wipe everyone's memory and then, oh, that was so sad. The fact that they're going to have to all forget the, yeah. Because it's going to be, yeah, because she can never be anyone. She, they'll never, you know, she can't be super go around, you know, like, oh, yeah, I know who I am and stuff like that. It's almost like she's alone again. And then also they showed everybody and then the final one was the sister. Yeah. Oh, bless. Yeah, so everybody's getting their minds wiped and it's like how, you know, how that's going to play out going into next week's episode and stuff. It's like, I mean, I wonder whether this is my prediction. We've still got John and we've still got Brainy. They're not going to do it to them. Hmm. They didn't do it to them, did they? No. Can't do it to himself. (laughs) So at least she's got two people, but they're aliens, aren't they, basically? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. She hasn't got any real-time people that know... And also your sister's the main one, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, yeah. I have a theory. Here's my prediction, okay? So, not necessarily next week, but the way this will unravel with um, Alex is that they're going to use... Because one of the things that Supergirl likes to do, Supergirl, as much as I enjoy Supergirl, it does rely a little bit more on the kind of soppy, like, cliche things in storytelling sometimes. Um... So I think in this one, it's going to be because they're sisters, they have this unbreakable bond. And even though she's had her mind wiped, somewhere in her brain somewhere, she'll still remember. So initially it will work, you know, it will work. She won't know. And if she gets that weird octopus thing, alien octopus put on her head and it reads reads her mind and it won't find anything. But as the weeks go by, something will happen and she'll remember, and she'll, it'll, it'll be that thing to do with... That she realises she knows her. Yeah, and it'll be to do with love, and it'll be to do with the, sis- the bond of sisters. That's then the cheesy side will come in. Yeah, because it'll be like, because we're sisters and we have this bond... That's the only problem with Supergirl. It gets a bit, ooh, let's be all nice. Hmm. That's why, that's where it differentiates between the other ones, you see. The yeah. superior ones um, in that in the universe because that's why that's why i've always like sort of been torn you, mm-hmm. you know that because you go oh you go when you first said about it, i went i used to watch super because you know what i'm like 
may as well say this bit now before we carry on. I don't like um, remakes of things that were good when I was younger. And I, obviously Supergirl has been done. So I went, oh, no, I'm not going to watch that. And obviously I, when I first started watching it, I was going, yeah, really? And you go, go watch it, watch it, it's really good. And then obviously, I mean, I have this discussion with other people, another friend of mine who likes it, and I go, but I can some time, I just go, ah. <laughs> and then it's like, it's got really good. So I hope they, and they don't make it like you did. I want it to be something spectacular and for them to like find out. Yeah. <laughs> something, something that's um, more than just that. Oh, I know. I always know it's you. Because just be go back down the same old line they had before. And now the right is right in the story better. I hope it doesn't. It takes a lot longer. Yeah. At least till the end of the season before she actually realizes who she is. Hmm. Because you know we've got quite a lot to go still, haven't we? So. Yeah. It may be more in. Mm-hmm. Personally, that's my personal. We will see. Um, so the other, while we're on the topic of Super, Lex Luthor himself is actually going to be showing up in Supergirl uh, in a few episodes time, I think it is. I think it's like maybe three or four episodes time. Um, and he's being played by, I mean, there might be people listening to this that know this already, but it's just more of a, my reaction to you and your reaction to me about it. Um, John Cryer, who was uh, Alan Harper, Charlie Sheen's brother in Two and a Half Men, um, who was Ducky in the John Hughes movie 16 Candles um, and shaved his head bald and he's got like a, a goatee beard and stuff. So that'll do that'll do for Supergirl. So what's next? Arrow? Arrow! Hmm. So this episode was called I Am Emiko Queen. This is really confusing this whole episode. We have lots of... I'm still confused about the whole series affair with all these backwards and forwards twist hits. Where mm-hmm. is the actual series going? Unless the legends do something and it all goes back to normal. So it's so yeah. like, please, legends. Because the way it's going, I've got all that. The right to. Mm-hmm. So the, uh, the new female arrow, who's ruthless, she is uh, killing, she's evil, so she's killing she, you know, She's killing them. Yeah. Which was what he was like when he first started, obviously. Mm-hmm. And she has her own list. Um, but unfortunately, she wasn't as clever as arrow. Well, then again, I suppose he's been injured over time. So she got injured. Yeah. Because her ally, the, the new Arrow, has been, always been... I never know, remember his name. I always call him Mad Dog. <laughs> wild Dog. What's it? Remember? It's Wild Wild Dog. Wild Dog. Oh, his name. And they even said his real name. I still forgot his name, but even by the fall into the series. Like, Ren- Renee. Oh. Anyway, him. So, obviously, he'd helped the Arrow previously. So, she turned up to... Got him to help her. Um, obviously... He wants to help her. I'm not a team, and like he was pretty much very similar to what he was like back in the day. So mm-hmm. that was interesting. So then we get the um, they have the where the where she got shot. They go. He's now working for the police people. So they go and have a look, and they find some shards of blood on the glass. Uh, and <laughs> that police woman is hilarious. This is evidence. Don't trust the evidence. <laughs> and, she and she goes, I'll that. And then he ended up with it anyway. So I thought, well, hilarious. Like, you do it then, because you've got better technology than me. And for this, but he made a good He made a you good point. You can't touch that. You are out to touch that. He made a good point, though, didn't he? Because he said, what's the point in bringing me in as the Green Arrow if not going to make use of the the things that I, you know, the tools that I have at, at my disposal? It's hilarious, though, where the woman was so adamant, like, you don't touch that. You're not, you know, you're not allowed to do that. Put it in a little bag, a little <laughs> evidence bag. Give it to Dark Dana, and then and then he mm. ended up taking it with him anyway. It's like yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> he breaks up. <laughs> I got it anyway. <laughs> so anyway, so then we obviously we flip forward, which is really strange. To I put I don't I called him Road Dog, but his name is Maris or something. What was the name? Uh, Renee. R- Renee. Renee. Yeah. He's now the mayor. What? The, what the yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, and he's not the same as he was before. He doesn't really care about anybody. And has a terrible wig. Oh, I know. What was it? <laughs> I was. They showed him right, and then also he showed the woman. And I didn't realise that at the time, you know, when they showed all the people that met up after um, Roy and that came back off the island. 
Mm -hmm. It's Zoe. I just, just did not. I, this is a total truth, right? I'm going to go with Zoe Bird. Yeah. Who she what? Where's she come into it? I don't know anyone called Zoe. And mm -hmm. then she turns up. Oh, this is the girl, isn't it? Yeah. This this is it, my reveal for me this week. Oh, <laughs> there she is. I figure what. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> it was hilarious. I went, oh, yeah, that's how she is. Because I, I couldn't work out who this woman was. We're going, we're bringing Zoe. And I went, who's this Zoe? I don't, I don't think hmm. I ever said it to you when I think she Or maybe we, yeah. we haven't had a conversation. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so there we have that bit. Anyway, in the meantime, Argus are, are interrogating DLs about Dante, and they're trying to, like, the, um, Get some information out of him. That was very yeah. I think it's also thinking, why, what, who? Was it very happy mm -hmm. that? Um, then, obviously, then the DNA gets tested and thingy, a relative of this. So it's like, whoa. Um, Wait, hold on, you lost me there. You dropped, jumped from one bit to the next. Say, um, no, 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 because the way it was the bit and then they had the little flip and then went back to the DNA. Then they showed they showed the Argus. Then they showed the DNA, and then they went back yeah. to Mad, the dog. Uh, to Wild the dog. DNA. I call him Dog Man. <laughs> dog Man. <laughs> <laughs> I can never remember his name. All I can do is I make a note that goes, "Yeah, it's Mad Dog, Dog Man." So they go keep home, keep score, because every week she's probably going to come up with a slightly different name for him. <laughs> so we've had Mad Dog, Dog Man, and what was the other one you called him? I can't remember now. You called him something else as well, but um, yeah, what we'll names you come Road up with him dog. as the weeks? <laughs> Road Dog, yeah. There's always dog in it. So I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry, but you know, you know get, when you get old a bit, you know, you forget things. <laughs> <laughs> dog, because I have a dog, so I never, I never forget that bit. So anyway, so um, yeah, so basically uh, they showed that there was uh, what's her name, the arrow, P arrow, keep mm -hmm. doing her bit, and then he decides to let go. Yeah. And she's furious, like, "Hello, this is my deal. That's why I don't have a team. This is yeah. I do it. So he went, he went in the best place with her. Um." There was a very small, when they were doing the, uh, once they realised about the DNA, uh, there was Felicity talking to Oliver, and there was a very small crossover. Um, see, I don't remember a bit of crossover uh, reference on Supergirl. I don't know if you can, but on Arrow, there was a thing about the bread suit and the green suit. Yeah, they mentioned about the what had happened. Um, no, they didn't mention, make reference to it in... Um, no, they didn't at all. I, I thought I was right. So that was quite funny when she said about, you know, confused now. Mm-hmm. Right, super. Um, quite funny. Um, and anyway, then that, then they showed the DL's interrogation, the way Gil uh, decided on this way. This, he decided, he made a decision all on his own. His missus outside going, what the hell is he doing? Unfortunately, her boss, well, not her boss, <laughs> he's un I thought he was her boss at first, but then I realised she's above him. Yeah. He's Madam Secretary, and he's like Under Secretary or whatever he was. He goes, mm -hmm. what are you doing? And then she's all, I made it out, it was all her own idea. Like, oh, yes, this is what we're going with. <laughs> Shit, I didn't know he was going to tell him. If you tell us what who we need to, you're going home. He's like, no, what's going on? Mm -hmm. so, so Mrs. Diggle weren't happy. <laughs> And in keeping with that particular storyline, what's really interesting is, you know what they're, they're basically doing at the moment with Diaz? Um, they're building a new Suicide Squad. OK, I've seen that either. Yeah, but do you remember originally in Arrow they had the Suicide Squad where they had... Um, oh, what was his name? The black guy he ended up in prison with. Prison, but he was like, I saved people's lives and I ended up in here. Oh, yes. Um, yes yeah. Him and Deadshot. And there was a couple of others and they, you know, they put together the Suicide Squad from within Argus. Um, they're doing it again. They're doing a Suicide Squad. But now they're not allowed to call it the Suicide Squad because of the movies and stuff. So they were instead they were calling it the Ghost Initiative. Oh, OK. Um, and it's like, 
Oh, this is so annoying when they do this sometimes because it's like it's all DC. So just let them be Suicide Squad because if nothing else, surely it would be good sort of publicity for the movie or whatever. Um, but the reason they pulled that name from Arrow ages ago was because they were like, people will get confused. People will look at it and go, but this Suicide Squad is not the same Suicide Squad as on Arrow. So how can they both be the Suicide Squad? Do I need to watch Arrow so that I can watch the Suicide Squad movie? It's like they don't credit people with common sense or the fact that maybe people might do some research or whatever. It's like, no, you just can't use that name. So now they have to call them the Ghost Initiative. So it's like, oh, grrr. <laughs> okay, yeah. So anyway, yes, that was that. So that's what's going on there with Diaz and yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, so um, so then next thing you know, Curtis is also working with the Lady Arrow, which is really yep. cool. And then she finds the guy that she's been hunting, mm-hmm. and he claims he isn't the guy. So yeah, like, he says that he was out of the country. She's she can't prove it. I wasn't even here. It's yep. like all this time she's like. Everything's been leading to this bloke, and he's not even the bloke. Yeah. So like she would be. Yeah. So that. Right. Uh, but anyway. and then she, after that, she went to the grave, and after much pushing and prodding by um, Felicity earlier on, Oliver, and he, you know, convincing her she's your sister, you should reach out to her and stuff like that. Um, and he realised then that, and in this was quite funny because you think about right, their son has not been mentioned for ages, really, has he? No. So the son got sent away to keep him safe, and then they're talking about like other people and the way they are, their children and stuff like that. And I'm like, but you haven't really even spoken about your son, no. like you know. So I know he's probably still in protect, you know, somewhere for his own protection, but. I don't know, I just found it a bit weird. But yeah, he read all the stuff, found the letter and stuff, and found out dad, his dad had had yet another affair. He had another kid, and it was like, in the event of anything happening to me, take care of this kid. Clearly that never happened, and they weren't looked after, and that's why they had a hard life. He then feels bad about that, and so he decides, yeah, I'm going to reach out to her, I'm going to go and meet her. And so then she's at the grave, and then he turns up and introduces himself to her, and that was kind of, that was where it ended, wasn't it? Yeah, but but before that happened, Dharma got the intel from... Oh, the future, the future bit. The future bit, she got the yeah. intel, don't know, we don't know how she got it, because she didn't, she just said, I'm... And then, obviously, um, the other thing that happened is, Diaz is being tortured, which is brilliant, and they're putting mm. like, a bomb in his head, obviously. And he goes, yeah, but if it doesn't work, I'm coming for you. And then it ended yeah. with he found his sister. Actually. Yeah, that's what I said. That's how it ended. He went to the graveside also, and met up also, with also her. The road dog, mad dog, dog man. <laughs> He's out here. Mm-hmm. Because he got that guy said, Oh, I hope you look he goes, Oh yeah, it's all on track, I'm all right and then but his face made me think you're not thinking like that now. He was at the beginning thinking I don't care about nobody, but when she said all that stuff to him yeah. When that guy give him grief and give him a sort of like talking to him, go, I hope you're not like changing your mind on anything. He said, no, of course I'm not. But then you looked at him as like, because mm, after he saw Dana as well, hasn't he? So mm-hmm. Oh, maybe he's coming around to their way of thinking. Finally. Mm. But the thing is as well, it kind of implied that Renee is somehow was in on what happened to Felicity in the future. Yeah. That, so it's like, who is who's pulling the strings here who's the villain you know what's actually going on here you know felicity by all accounts had turned into a baddie in the future um so it's like what's what's actually going on it's like you going back to the beginning of this part of the chat when you said about being a bit confused by arrow because now they've decided to do these flash forwards and we've got this story in the future you know there's no arrows nowhere to be found like oliver's nowhere to be found um Roy's come back from the island. We don't even know if he's alive or dead. They don't mention No, him. well, all we know is that William went, got given the stuff and went in search of Roy to try and find answers. And 
X amount of episodes in, I still feel like we're getting lots of breadcrumbs and no answers. <laughs> and it's like, I hope they don't just keep pulling the wool over, over our eyes until the final episode. And then they pull back the curtain and go, this is what happened. So I want to start getting drip feed us a bit of information, you know, but it's, give it's us some clever, clues. It's clever, Arrow, the way, see, the thing is, out of all of them, it can do this sort of mind games with you, but then turn it around pretty pretty not not like suddenly and you start mm. turning around again can't it because yeah i guess a bit grittier than all the others so i i'm, I'm hopeful for a next week so i'm looking forward mm. to what happens next but um yeah so we'll see how it goes but yeah okay so that was that was our row so basically we've covered covered what happened in this week's episode um so now we're moving on to the flash yeah, so we got a double whammy for that because we had they started a week earlier than the other one, didn't they? So we yeah, so we had. Um, I think they were called the the first one's called the Flash and the Furious, and then the second episode is called Seeing Red. So Flash and the Fu- Furious was from two weeks ago. Yeah, so it was quite interesting the beginning of the first one because we had our ideas that Nora isn't who we think she is, mm-hmm. and um, we had the bit where she was speaking to to Thorne and about the killing the granny yeah and and then we found out that he was the one that helped to do the time travel in the first place yeah uh so she's sort of kind of working with him originally as we said so she was definitely originally working with him mm-hmm. so whether like we said uh previously has she had a change of heart well we'll see but that was quite interesting um oh, i like the little crossover Again, to the, um, you know, when they did the, uh, out, what was it called, Everworlds? Elseworlds. Elseworlds, about the green suit. Yeah. Uh, that was quite funny. Um, and it was quite hilarious. I love Cisco, obviously, and I love Sherlock. 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 <laughs> or Sh- Shirley, as, the, as the, da- da- Dibney calls him. Um, yeah. Telling him that he 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 can get paid for the next for anything, so he said, "All right, don't worry, I have something of my own to do," which was interesting. Mm. He was obviously looking up something to do with obviously, oh, well, we know Nora. He just read her, so that was quite interesting. He obviously had a court case where uh, Cecile <laughs> back from her maternity leave, which was hilarious. Yeah, the weather bitch. Now I mm-hmm. was a bit confused because I thought. She kept going like, oh, like something going on. And she kept looking at the girl when she was doing it. So I was thinking, has she got other powers? So she, did you, I don't know whether you thought that she's trying to influence her judgment. But obviously it comes down to the fact that she obviously can sense what you're thinking and realising the girl was sad, sorry for what she'd done. At one point I was sort of thinking, oh, what's going on here? Mm. But yeah, so uh, she's obviously seeing her thinking, oh, shouldn't have been uh, stupid of me and all this stuff. But the other, and Nora's face, she weren't very happy, was she? No. She was not. So then we start thinking, hmm, what is this girl up to? Mm-hmm. Um, then we had uh, Cisco in his hand, getting a little bits out of him, and then him saying he didn't miss being, doing all that stuff. He'd like, he like, quite likes being a normal guy. Yeah. Quite, Sort of like, oh, because obviously he was super cool when he he thought, oh, I've got powers. But now it's sort of things like took over his life now. He's, he's sort of thinking, I wish I hadn't got them. Yet mm-hmm. she the opposite, thinking, I can't do without mine. Yeah. So what did, what's your take on the next bit? Also, that new villain that appeared. That Nick, that yeah, so oh, oh. like you say, he had the, they had the whole thing with the court case and, you know, she was feeling remorse and Cecile was picking up on that. Um, and ultimately, she decided to stand up in court and say, you know, I'm guilty. I, I deserve to be locked up. Um, so it threw the whole thing out and they basically decide, right, they're going to transfer her. So on her way to being transferred, earlier on in the episode, we had seen this girl. She um, the girl was pulled over by cops were, you know, talking to him about his speed. She just like took over his car somehow, got in. And then it's like, oh, she's got some of this metech that we've seen showing up in this season and she activated the car she went off so then she shows up again because she stops the prison transport and she like short circuits the car's electrics or whatever and she gets her out and says i'm here to save you 
and then um turns out that she's there to break her out because she needs it and she wants to form a new female version of the rogues which is obviously the group that we saw a long time ago which our boys from prison break and stuff used to be a yeah. part of um but she wants to start like an an old girl an all girl version um so she's like yeah you know with me i need your help we need to break into this argus facility i then thought as soon as i heard them say argus i was like are we going to see diggle are we going to see yeah. some like crossover <laughs> um but no that obviously didn't happen um so so yeah so we got that that they were going to break in there because they wanted to get something and it turned out the thing she wanted to get was like this high-tech car and what was really interesting is that they're really oh, the car was awesome. yeah but what's really interesting is the fact they're really leaning into this we can now talk about batman stuff because they said about how the car was made using wayne tech Yes. So it's like, oh, okay. So they're really leaning into this using Batman related stuff now. Um, so yeah, that was like an interesting little Easter egg. I don't know it's if everybody cartoon. picked up on that. It had cartoon feels and everything, didn't it? For the mm -hmm. TNT. Yeah, on the on the display panel inside the car. Yeah. Yeah, and it phases and everything. It was like, oh, I want one. I say what? Yeah, one. it was cool. It had lots of abilities, which was pretty cool um so yeah so that was that was that um so they stole the car and then it was like right we need to get her back and then Nora's like this whole thing of i was right about her all along because obviously Nora's main set is now thorn killed my grandmother thorn is a bad guy nobody who's bad can be redeemed that's why she was then like annoyed about this girl uh you know what was happening with this girl because she's like oh she's a villain villains can't be redeemed and then they were all saying, oh, but people can change. You don't know. And she's like, see, I knew I was right. She's a bad guy. Look, look what she's done now yeah, sort of yeah. thing. Um, so she felt like vindicated, like I told you all that she was bad and bad people can never change. But then actually as it rolled on, it turned out, no, she was doing it under duress. And then when when Nora did turn up. Oh, yes, yeah, that was the other thing. So obviously Barry, when Barry went to stop in Italy, because of the method right, slammed into the car. Right, yeah. Right, right, right in. Yeah, they kind of circuited him, didn't it? So it meant that he was out of action. So she turns up to stop them in the car. The girl's like, oh, yeah, we're going to get away from her. And then would like, put the kibosh on that by using her weather powers to prevent them from getting away, meaning that they got caught, meaning that, you know, she then did a good thing, which then made Nora think, oh, maybe I was a bit too hasty, which then gave her pause. And she had a conversation to with who was it she spoke to was it um was it her mum that she spoke to about it was it iris and she said about like you know giving people the benefit of the doubt or something or the, no no it was with um oh, and then she spoke to barry and said about like thorn do you ever think he could be redeemed and he said maybe in some some world in some time perhaps mm. you know he could atone for what he's done and so then that got her thinking Maybe I've been too hasty of not being, you know, on side with Thorn in the future again. Yeah. So she decided to go back and give him a second chance, didn't she? Yeah. But uh, there was a funny, there was a funny thing that happened in that episode. Is when Barry was uh, sent down, and obviously the Sherlock's explanation of, well, he might end up in bits and pieces when they sent him down into that, into the cage at the bottom to stop him. Yeah. And then he brought him a book, Uncaged Desire, written by yes. Mick. Mick. Mick of the Legends. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, that was brilliant. Oh, oh my days. That was so funny. And then obviously we got um, Sherlock. He's trying to decipher that book that she's got. With the speed language. Yeah, which was in a previous episode. And then mm -hmm. he goes into see Gideon. She has deleted her files. Yes, because he was trying to get a bit more information and it was like there was nothing there. Yeah, it's all been deleted. So it's like, why is she yeah, covering her tracks? Mm. Because, I mean, I know from our perspective, from watching it, our perspective is, well, she's working with Thorn. Thorn is the reverse Flash. The reverse Flash is the Flash's enemy. But we still don't really know what the bigger picture is here like why is she working with thorn what does thorn want out of all of this because as much as now she's had this change of heart of maybe people can turn good i don't think he's turned good i think that she's a, a 
<laughs> she's a pawn of thorns and he's using her for something else but why is she covering up is she doing that like did she think to do that herself or did he tell her make sure you need, leave no traces of anything you know make sure you erase your history and things like that i don't know yeah she's um yeah maybe but then i mean like i say with that where the witch was, was what's that got to do with anything she's like mm. she's like oh i want to get her she's done that a few times she's had that face like she's like oh i didn't get my way sort of attitude so yeah, a bit of a spoiled brat i thought that would trust her but actually then moving on to the, uh, the next episode um hold wait two seconds two seconds before you do so just quickly covering a point as well that you mentioned before about the whole thing with Cisco and, and Caitlin uh, coming at this idea of a cure metahumans from two different perspectives. Um, and obviously, like you said, Cisco liked the idea and she doesn't. It's one of those things where you think uh, this is this is going to be a point of contention further on down the road. And we see that up in the next episode. The little girl is actually working with Sakido. She gave him that file. Yeah. Well, for sure, so we shouldn't stop doing it, stop doing it. But then she gives him information. No, no, no. When we got when we got the flashbacky sort of episodes of how he got his powers, um, and when he went to the hospital, and it turned out that she was the person, and so she started helping him in the beginning. Uh, so she's always been a I part of all of this. She, she's been trying to do it for a while. Cause she said, you stop, stop doing it because he's getting, you know, isn't it? Hmm. So, and obviously the impression was, I don't know, as bad as she seemed, but then she in the file. So uh, did did that, which is cool. I don't know where he was. Um, and so he gave her with Nora. Oh, quite horribly as well. Mm. He broke her back. Yeah. Because they thought they had the edge, didn't they? Because okay, he went around killing these people. Yeah, because we had the bit. So he got the list, and then he went and you had the two villains. You had the guy, I think his name's Bork, <laughs> and you had the, the snake guy that we've seen before. Um, Nor he Norvak. Died. Is his yeah, name Nor Norvak? Norvak. And he, they were together, and they were breaking in somewhere. And he turned up, and he killed the big guy, and Norvak got away. And so they're on the case, trying to get to the bottom of it. And they're like, "Oh, here's a pattern, so we can now intercept him." So they all turn up because they've got, "Oh, we've got Killer Frost with us," and she's like not affected by him and stuff. But then things all went a little bit sideways, and then, like you said, Nora. Nora paid the price because he broke her back. Yeah, and also because her powers were affected, she couldn't really heal. He took this under her powers. Yeah. Healing properly, so it was looking really dire at one point. Mm hmm. Um, so then they decided, obviously, he's, they realise he's after matters, so they got all the matters together to try and save them. Yeah. In the meantime, we found out he had a copper helping him. Yeah. So they obviously. Obviously, that happened. And I love the way Dibley was calling Sherlock, Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> Shirley, how are you doing, Shirley? And then there was that bit where they were trying to get them all in a helicopter and Dibney did a stretch Armstrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I did you wonder what he was going to do? I thought, is he going to turn himself into like a ladder and let them all climb up or something? I didn't know how like... he was going to do it. <laughs> I did feel that he was going to use his stretchy abilities to do something. I just didn't know what he was going to do. So then when he did that, yeah, he went, he pulled himself up to the helicopter and then he turned around and stretched his arms down. And then that's why he got them, he got them all to stand in single file so that he could pick them up one at a time and bring them up into the helicopter. Mm. Um, I, I, um, yeah, so they got the DNA of Cicado, Cicado, what was Cicada. Cicada, like the insect, like the, the bug. Um... And that's because of the noise that he makes with his mask. Yeah, that was when um, that's that later on. So you're jumping ahead a little bit there. So yeah, so I'm injured and I'm finding out. We're not saying, saying every minute from the episode. No, no, no. Yeah, but um, well, obviously we need to keep it like in order to a point because otherwise we're going to confuse people listening to this. So they decided Barry was crazy angry and wanted to go after him and he wanted to take him down and he was full of rage. So he went there and then they read on the thing that he was reading higher than he's ever read before and it was like you know, he's going to go off edge and he's going to kill him um and he was just like beating him up and fighting and stuff like that and then obviously caitlin turned up and used her powers to stop his dagger that allowed barry to beat him up and subdue him oh, yeah, she did a frozen version of it. yeah and then um she was using her ice powers to keep the dagger from coming back to his hand 
But then it was like, uh, when Barry looked like he was going to kill Cicada, Nora turned up and she's like, she because she'd healed by this point, and she turned up and she's like, Dad, no! And so he stopped and he didn't kill him. The knife came back, but then he got cut by Killer Frost's, one of her, like, eye staggers. Yeah, and then she... she was like, I have some of his blood now. So, like you said, then they managed to get some of his DNA, which then she used to give Cisco a gift. Yes. And they also now they decided that because they re- remembered that he had a child and he's trying to save his child, mm-hmm. they, they use that. But obviously it's the opposite with him. Yeah. He's going, yeah, we're going to save you. We, we want to help you with your child. But he wants to kill Barry's child. Yeah. So that's the opposite on that. And plus, Sherlock knows Nora's working with someone. Yeah, he's starting to put the pieces together, isn't he? Because, like, the line he managed to decipher about the timeline is malleable. Yeah. And he's like, why Why would that be such a thing? Why do you need to malleable the timeline and all this stuff? <laughs> so he's he's going further into his investigation to find out what's going on there. And he doesn't trust things. Um, and then, yeah, Caitlin gave Cisco the blood in an ice ball to keep it preserved. So that was clever. And then it's like, this will allow you to then use this to synthesize the Metacure because she came to realization that obviously it might not be for her, but they should give other people a choice. And she came to that conclusion from having the conversation with the snake guy, Norbot. Because he was on about how he became a Meta and like he never wanted it. And now he's stuck with this snake in his head and all of this kind of stuff. And it, it gave her pause for thought of like, yeah, there's a lot of people out there they didn't ask for this and they don't want it. They just want to go back to their normal lives. So maybe I should help him come up with this cure. Allowed it, yeah. So it's like it should give them a choice. This is my big butt. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the big butt is that I think this whole meta-human cure thing is going to come back to bite them. I think it's going to fall into the wrong hands. And it's going to end up being something that they're like, we could use again somewhere like the Flash. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it is a dangerous thing because obviously if there's something that can turn it, turn your powers off, someone out there is going to hear about it and they're going to, in future episodes, are going to think that's going to be a thing they have to stop happening. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very interesting, huh? Interesting to see where that goes. Interesting to see where the Sherlock investigation goes. Interesting to see what really is going on between Nora and Thorne and what he wants. Oh, and that was the other thing with Thorne is that we saw... No. I thought she let him... No, didn't she decide she was going to help him more because his time's running out? And there was a timer. There's a clock. Oh, yeah, that's what she pressed. That's what it was, wasn't it? And the clock is counting down. So it's like, is that how much time he has left? That was the noise. I, I, at the time, I thought she just let, like, released him. Yeah. Also, the little thing they did with the, because obviously it's the same actor playing Sherlock and Thorne, the bit when Sherlock was pondering who's, like, the other person, who's the mastermind, who's pulling the strings, and he looked in the screen and there was a reflection of him looking back the at old him. Sherlock, I know. Mm. The old, what was he called? Har- I, I, she Harrison was, Wills, yes. Wills, yeah. So yeah, that was the, I like that little touch. I don't think they keep that. Actually. He's great. He is great, and so co- cool how they find ways to bring him back every series. He just brings a unique take. I mean, I know we all know it's the same bloke, but mm-hmm. then you forget it's the same bloke. Yeah. Because he makes you believe the character he, he yeah. plays. It, he's so good. Because obviously he's a buddy as well, isn't he? He's like the other guy as well. Isn't he? One of the things, this is my pondering thought here that ties Supergirl and The Flash together. Interesting thing in both is that there is this anti-other sentiment running them. In Supergirl, you've got everybody is rising up and there's this kind of hate group thing that is going up against aliens and they're not like us and they need to go home. And then in The Flash, we're seeing this the beginnings of people turning against metahumans. And so you've got, like, <clears throat> obviously Cicada wants to kill them. The nurse wants to get rid of them. The Officer Jones, who now we found out was working, giving Cicada the information, 
he also is against metahumans. They've got this whole thing about finding a cure for metahumans. So it's like this, there's two similar sort of plot threads running between the two shows. Yeah. You know, where it's this, like, a, a going up against the group of the other, whether it's aliens or whether it's superhumans. And I just found that interesting. It's like, is that is that by design? You know, is that um, that there's going to be something that ties the two together? Or is it more, well, you know, they're just, they're tapping into the real world stuff, you know, like maybe things to do with... In, in the states with you know anti-immigrant sentiment and things like that and they're doing a parallel to it i i don't know but well, they do do that in the american things don't they hmm they do tend to throw some real stuff in there. yeah they sort of go, oh it's in the storyline so only certain people will actually there's always like propaganda in it like throw it in yeah so they'll understand this other people won't yeah it's a bit like like you say in the supergirl with the aliens like you just said it's like, obviously, mm-hmm. that's how it is, isn't it? It's like, you're aliens because you don't come from here. Yeah. Like we're using, they're using it in, a, like, a supernatural way, but they're obviously... Everyone knows what the, the term alien means. It's not alien another planet, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very clever the way they do that. They do that. Because they're, they're, very, they're very, very good at that in America. I mean, mm-hmm. we only have oh, that program, what was it? Euphoria. Is it Euphoria? Uh, no, but I know what you're doing. Do- Utopia. Utopia. Something like that. So that was our their way of doing something similar, mm. which was good. And uh, I think there was a second series, but I don't think I watched it. I think I watched it, but I can't remember now. It was that long ago. But they obviously were doing the similar thing. They were trying mm. to do, but they're very clever, the American they? They do this because they, that's their way. They can, because obviously, you know, freedom of speech and all that over there. Not really. Yeah. But they can, um, can get little nuggets in there. Hmm. So people that like, everyone that's like open to the world and go, where yeah. they're going with that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's interesting. That's what makes it good though. That's why. Like I say, to me, it's not just a pro- sometimes it's not just a program. It's a program with, with a, within. It's not like corrupting your thought because most of the thought is what you think anyway. It's not like mm-hmm. a like a brainwashing type thing. It's just like just like that. We're letting you know what's really going on in our lives. It's the yeah. only way we can get this message out. Our country is, you know, it is ruled. We we don't we can't openly come and say that because we all get shot or something <laughs> 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 mm. like in like in the programs yeah so yeah very clever yeah. Mm. so the orville my opinion is this is it was very like this to begin with just this because it's yeah. sort of comedic science fiction but it's always has I mean I'll be, you know, program, you know nonsensical and then I'll say she yeah. watched it I wait to watch it Get this new boy, Tyler. Tyler yeah. um, no, that's not right here. No, mm. there's nothing to suspect of, is he? Yeah. I'd say I had my suspicions about her. And the other one, his ex, who's now like, he was pining after the other week, doing his, like, bye bye and watching her. Kelly, um, yeah. Like, oh, I can tell you're in, you're like, you were sorted. Go and have some fun time watching mm-hmm. the thing and I. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Oh my god! And then she, then he was to music. Oh, he's a forty-year-old guy, Billy Joel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then Billy Joel's watching this going, "Hey man, hey now." <laughs> very funny. So anyway, so then she persuades him, and I thought, "Oh, it's quite neat." And then obviously go out, and it all looks like everything's going well. And obviously then they get. These krill, because I remember them from the first. Yeah, the krill. Because mm-hmm. a couple of those guys, him and another guy, went went looking like them, didn't they? Yeah. On the ship. I remember that, and there was a uh, school kids, and that was one of the reasons why things didn't happen the way it should have done. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so yeah, well, oh no, those those guys, I remember them. And then next thing they get pulled into the ship because they had the green fox on them, which then therefore they were clicking them. They were the calm coast. 
Yeah, so the Khan codes clearly say. Um, yeah, the Khan codes will, will, will talk to the woman unless she give me the command, basically. That's that bit. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the other ship, what's the ginger called? His buddy. Um, oh, I've forgotten what his name is right now, but the one that's his mate. He's had um, classes on how to chat women up with the. Remembering that went really bad. Yeah. He seriously has no idea how to chat with us. Mm. Don't mind, and then that's fine. I'm just not bothered with that. But in the meantime, while he's gone on his love thing, I want to be a big captain. <laughs> <laughs> but then they're uh, attached by the. Yeah, so they. Oh, they shit. Up... Yeah. And obviously, then they got <laughs> Doshi Shu bullying him, and then they got attacked by the pigmen. I call them. But they were like apes, weren't they? I thought they were like Orc, Lord of the Rings and stuff. <laughs> this sort of grunty noise, and I was like, pigs, are they? Mm. I don't know if they sound like apes. So I'm not sure where they were. Um, right, I did make a note, because I wasn't quite sure between the captain and the krill. Yeah. And I put, hello, at least he knows who Billy Joel is. Yeah, that was basically when he was like just trying to be insulting, and he was just kind of like said about Billy Joel and stuff. As a as a way of kind of like insulting them, but they looked at it, it's like just completely washes over their heads because they're like, well, we don't have any clue who Billy Joel is. So. Yeah. But at the time, I thought that you know I do yeah. the commerce thing. I just like, point things out. Of, I'll make a note of that. <laughs> that. It was funny, but I can't yeah. remember what it was now. Give her a go, and then they give her a Billy. Well, Joel yeah, because and... yeah, you you jump in ahead again there. So basically, they got attacked, and then they had to uh, they get an escape pod. They go to this planet that looks like one of those planets they use quite regularly in like um, Star Trek and stuff. So, yeah, and Lost in Space and stuff. So it's like, oh, so it's probably somewhere in, you know, in, in North America, they, they sort of went, or Canada, they maybe, they, a lot of stuff in Canada. They, this is, we can double this up as an alien planet. And they, um, they, they have to work together. So then I then thought, I don't know if you remember this film, maybe some people listening to this will, but there was a film in the 80s which had uh, Dennis Quaid in it. And it was basically, it was a sci-fi thing, and it was, he was a pilot, and there was this alien, and they were in a war together, but then the, um, they both crashed on the same planet, and then they realised they had to work together in order to, to survive. So it's even though they were mortal enemies, it was like, if we don't help each other, we're both going to die, so there's no sense in that, so we have to work together. That was kind of the sense I got from this, was like, oh, it's a bit like Alien Mine. Because they're they're enemies, but they've got to work together now. So so they had this, so they worked together, and then she was still like not trusting him. Why should I trust you? You know, and this, that, and the other. And he's like, because you know the feelings I had for you when you were Tyler, they were real feelings, and we need to work together. So corny, isn't he? Yeah, I love it. It's so corny, it's hilarious. But um, that's what I love about it. They're trying to like take the they're, they're taking the mick out of every single space thing mm-hmm. and then they have some exciting moments as well like obviously in the season before like i said i was thinking oh this is just silly yeah and then like oh I'm so exciting and then i thought oh i've got some action this week obviously it's only what third week in isn't it or something yeah so potentially we're going to have some like more action because he, he he's clever because he, he he keeps the comedy in mm-hmm. he also has the serious bit as well yeah so I, that's what I like about it. It's sort of like there's potential for, I know the series is going to get like, there's going to be some sort of like, ah, I hope they get away sort of attitude. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, so we had the, we had that. Sitting in the studio going, we're sitting in a spaceship. <laughs> no, you're not. Sorry. They had, the, <laughs> they had the moment of jeopardy. And then he said, look, you need to stay here. It's not safe for you outside. I'll put the, the, the beacon up to call for help. And she's like, you won't come back. And he's like, I will come back, I promise. And then he did come back. And then they got saved. And they went back to the ship. And then she's like, oh, it's just going to go back to normal. You're going to hold me as a prisoner. But then he was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And then he's like, I've called your people. They're coming to collect you. And she's like, OK. And then he let her go. And she's like, this doesn't change anything. Like, we're still enemies. And st-. and he's like, yeah, but, you know. Again. Yeah, because he's like, well, maybe things will change. And then he was like, he made, and then, like, as you said, he gave it the, the disc thing with Billy Joel on. And then he said, if you ever want to get together and watch old movies. Um, and it's like, okay. And then she sort of looked at him as like, you're a very strange human being. <laughs> but, um, yeah, 
But again, speculation for the future. So I wonder whether this will be one of those things that will come back in the future where because he was kind to her and because he showed, look, our two species could learn how to get along with each other, that maybe towards the end of the season, they'll be in danger, they'll be under attack, and then she'll appear and she'll save them. And then it will just be like, this doesn't mean anything. This is just because I'm, I'm, I had a debt to you because you freed me before. But there'll still be that kind of comedic tension of like, yeah. I like you and you like me, but we can't like each other. You know, like they're in primary school. Um, the whole program is genius. Yeah. It's genius. With the crazy man, you know, like the the, the two guys and the baby. Oh, Bort- and Bortus. The, yeah. Go to a planet for a pee. Yeah. Oh, I have to travel back. I don't get to a pee for years and years. And it's a ceremony. Thank you for attending. <laughs> <laughs> and setting up that young girl with that really weird young oh weird looking face guy. Yeah, with the brain the sort of brain head, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just so and I love the robot. Yes. We all love a robot. Isaac. So. Good old Isaac. So that's not how a robot because he lost his face, the robot is the everyone loves the robot. Yep. So he's just you know, he's just put everything into one thing, hasn't mm-hmm. he? He's put his humour from his crazy family guy, American dad in it. And then he's got all this, like, space stuff as well. And, like, it just shows how much he loves Star Trek as well. Because, I mean, like, last week's episode, I really enjoyed last week's episode. Because of so because I've watched so many of the different versions of Star Trek over the years. Last week's episode, I got really excited about the fact that the Doctor from Star Trek Voyager and the Doctor yeah. from Star Trek Enterprise were both in last week's episode... And because it was all about Alara, and Alara's people are clearly supposed to be like Spock's people. They're like Vulcans. And they're all like, oh, we're intellectuals, and we don't believe in war, and we don't believe in, you know, and we hate the military. We're all about academics and stuff like that. And it's like, you look at it on the surface, and you go, he's just ripped off Star Trek. But then you go, yeah, but he hasn't really ripped it off. It's more, he's a fan of this stuff, quite clearly. Genius. And he's making his own version of something that he clearly loves, just in the same way that we do. Yeah, it. it I mean, it is. Uh, it is genius. I love it. Yeah. I love the fact that yeah, you got all the little tidbits from the as if they were a real space. Mm-hmm. The tune is great. I have also downloaded that one. <laughs> um, so you viewers, you people out there, get on the ringtone. Um, I love that music. My dog Bruce, I have to put the headphones on so you can hear it. Yes, he does um, love he the music from the different shows, doesn't he, Bruce? Yeah, Bruce? yes, he does. Bruce is a chocolate Labrador. For those of you listening, watching know. this podcast, he loves the Orville. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he loves that. One. But yeah, so uh, you know, it's just genius. I just thought it was just going to be daft and stupid. Also, I'm glad I pursued watching it last season. Yeah, and that. Like, yay, here we go. <laughs> so I've just, you, you've um you've given me two ideas for potential merchandise opportunities in the future, Mum. So if we if we get the, go down that line, if we get big enough that, you know, we, we can think about doing merchandise. Um, I've just thought <laughs> about two T-shirt designs. OK, so T-shirt design one is is a quote from you, which will just be like, um, if you something like if you like this show, uh, download it as a ringtone. Um, or, or just you quote, just quote of you saying, um, mum said, I downloaded this for a ring, for my ringtone. And then the other one being a picture of Bruce with a pair of headphones on saying that, um, uh, something about geek culture. I mean, I don't know, we'd work on it, but something about like, uh, I'm, I'm a dog and I'm a geek too, or something. And him just like wearing a pair of headphones and like listening to Star Trek. I look music. forward to the picture on the next one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> photograph and I can put a bubble to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you'll need. To get a picture of Bruce with headphones on and then we'll put it on the podcast. We'll we'll put a picture up on the podcast for everybody at home to see. A picture of, of your crazy dog who likes listening to sci fi music. <laughs> okay. There we go. Oh, that's fun. So, yeah, so I think that we've, we've done good there. We've covered quite a lot of stuff. It's been an interesting first episode. Um, hopefully those of you listening and watching, you know, you're going you're gonna to forgive us and give us some, 
give us some leeway and give us some room to, to move because you know this is all new to us and this is the first one so there's going to be some there's good yeah we're not professionals there's going to be some teething problems but hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully it was fun it was informative it gave you something to think about it gave you a laugh and you know i'm sure that it will get more polished and and better as we go along but um but for now mum famous we get the more famous we get, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll have something else telling us what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Not just relying so, on our own old brain to remember everything. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber and join us for more insanity like this every single week. Thank you very much to my uh, brilliant co-host, Mum. Thank, Thank you. you. And um, yeah, and we will chat again this time next week. So you all take care now, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye.